the tenure of one whole year by indenture by force of the statute for transferring property called or known by the name or sign of the ship situate in being in Corfa Castle, aforesaid now in the tenor or occupation of him, the, the said Nicholas, Nicholas Cobb. Cobb. Yeah. So that's his property, known as the ship. So he didn't have a house, he lived on a ship? Putting that together with the evidence for his brewing could bring us to the conclusion that he had a pub or oh. tavern called the ship. We are in Pool, Dorset, to see how far back I can trace my English ancestry. To help her in her task, Catherine is meeting local historian Di Watkins. Hello, you must Hello. be Di. Welcome to Poole Museum. Thank you so much. My name is Catherine. Hello, Catherine. And I'm so excited to learn from you today. We're all excited. Come on through. Di, what can you tell me about my five times great-grandfather, Giles Hosier, and his life in Poole? He went out to Newfoundland as the agent for one of the chief merchants. They, they had money, they had money. Good. I, that? Elizabeth Hosier, of the town of the county of Poole, mm -hmm. being weak of body, but of sound and disposing mind, do make and ordain this is my last will and testament. Also, I give unto my grandson, Giles Hosier, son of William Hosier. So, this is his grandmother. That's right, yes. My clock and clock caves, clock cases. Case. He gets a clock? He gets a clock and a case. Okay. So Giles Hosier is Elizabeth Hosier's grandson. And he's the son of William. So William is my six times great grandfather mm -hmm. and Elizabeth Hosier is my seven times great grandmother. Yep. And she gives out clocks. She does. Time's up, here's a clock. Yep. This is the last will and testament of Mr. Nicholas Cobb. And who is Nicholas Cobb? Look at this line here. Okay, I give and bequeath unto my daughter Elizabeth. Mm -hmm. So Elizabeth Hosier is the daughter of Nicholas Cobb. Yes. So that means Nicholas Cobb is my eight times great grandfather. It does indeed. Nicholas Cobb. Of or castle. Yeah. So he has a castle? No. Oh. Corf Castle is a name for a village in which there is a castle. Okay. It's gone very far back. Die. It has indeed, yes. I'm impressed. Her eight times great grandfather, Nicholas Cobb's will of 1739, shows he lived in the village of Corf Castle. To find out about his life here, Catherine and Di have come to one of the local pubs. Okay, Catherine, have a look at this document. Thank you. Oh, 1701. 1701, it's going back a bit further. Nicholas Cobb mm -hmm, mm -hmm. of the borough of Wharf Castle have spoken of work fraudulent. Fraudulent, or fraudulous, as they, they wrote it here. Oh, no. Uh, yeah. <gasps> Fraudulous and scurrilous words. Slagging people off. Yeah, exactly. Let me it read the transcript. This okay. happens to me all the time. This is absolutely <laughs> understandable. <laughs> Nicholas Cobb of this borough of Corfe Castle hath spoken diverse fraudulous and scurrilous words of Thomas Frost Esquire and Thomas Shangway Esquire, two of the magistrates. He slagged off the legal officers themselves. It was probably the worst people he could have chosen. Oh, oh it's the will and testament of my eight times great-grandfather, Nicholas Cobb. That's it, yep. I give and bequeath unto my granddaughter my large furnace and mashing tub. Why is he passing on a furnace and a mashing tub? It sounds to me that he was brewing beer. Mashing tub certainly is, is part of the brewing process. And we have another document which could support that. Okay. So Nicholas Cobb made a very important agreement with he someone did. else. Nicholas Cobb, for the tenure of one whole year by indenture by force of the statute for transferring property called or known by the name or sign of the ship situate in being in Corfa Castle, aforesaid now in the tenure or occupation of him, the, the said Nicholas, Nicholas Cobb. Cobb. Yeah. So that's his property known as the ship. So he didn't have a house, he lived on a ship? He had a house as well. Oh, but this is an agreement about and his ship. It's about 
putting that together with the evidence for his brewing could bring us to the conclusion that he had a pub or oh, tavern called the yeah. show. We have a map dated to the middle of the 18th century. <gasps> Each of these plots have a number. The ship. Uh-huh. And that is number four. Two, four. Four. Right, excellent. Why? How did yeah. I just find the ship? Yes. <laughs> Nicholas Cobb's house. Yeah. Uh, yeah somewhere, One, it? three, two. Oh, my goodness. He lives almost just across the road. Right. If this is the castle and this is that big square where we just came in, <gasps> is this his house? Well, not his house. This is, is the ship here. The ship? Yeah. Oh, so this is the sh this is a very old pub then. Oh my gosh. This is your ancestral pub. Wow. So I should drink here for free. Would you like to see where he lived? This would be right here. Voila. So this was my eight times great grandfather's Nicholas Cobb's cottage. That's where he lived. He did well to have any property at all and a business. He did. Seems like a really good life. Mm, yeah, a prominent resident. So he was already dead when this map was made, but how come it's still called Nicholas Cobb's house? Well, houses weren't numbered like they are now, and it would be named after the prominent person that lived in it. In this case, Nicholas Cobb. Oh, so it remained the Nicholas Cobb house probably for a really long time. Absolutely. And now it's number, number 18. 18. <laughs>